Hey guys, it's Chris Fernandez from Hughes Combat Photography. I'm going to show you something pretty cool that I just got today. And I'm going to start off with a story. So y'all know that fairy tales start off with once upon a time. Cool war stories start off with no shit there I was. Cool vintage camera war stories. I'll start this one off with no shit there I was at an estate sale a couple of years ago. And right when my wife and I walked in, a guy walks in front of me and he's carrying this really cool, really interesting looking twin lens reflex camera. I'd never seen it before. So it was all beat up, but looked interesting. So I asked him about it and he says, oh yeah, man, I just, it was on the shelf for 10 bucks. I'm going to put it on display at home. I look at it and it says Fothflex. Never heard of that before. So I said, hey, I'm, a, I'm an actual film photographer and you know, I restore cameras and use them. Any chance I can get that from you? And he said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm buying it. Sorry, bro. And so I missed out on it. So since then, I've been looking for a Fothflex. Well, the other day, looking through Facebook Marketplace, and uh, here's a trick for those of you who are always combing the internet for um, cool cameras, is if you're looking for, for example, a Linhoff, don't just do a search on Facebook Marketplace for a Linhoff camera, look for old camera, vintage camera, antique camera. Because you have people who find these things in grandma's attic or whatever, have no idea what it is, and they just put it as an old camera. So that's how I got a Linhoff uh, Super Technica. Um, this time I found a listing for two vintage cameras one of them was an Argus C3, and one was a Fothflex. Got in contact with the lady, told her what it was, uh, showed her how to do the you know the basic checks to see if the knobs were moving, if there was an image looking through the ground glass, and everything looked pretty good, so I took the chance on it. She sold it to me for a very good price, and in return, I'm going to take a professional portrait of her whenever she's around. But today, it showed up. I haven't opened it up yet. I'm going to open it up with you, and we will see what kind of condition this thing is in. And I'll tell you the story as uh, the story of this camera as I'm opening this box. So mid 1930s in Germany, Franz van Heidecke had just come up with the Raleigh Flex. This is an early, not the earliest, but this is an early Raleigh Flex. The Raleigh Flex just took off, incredibly popular, and other camera companies then start scrambling, trying to figure out, okay, how do we get in on this? And you have, for example, Voigtlander came up with their version, the Voigtlander Superb, which is just an incredible, superb uh, twin lens reflex. And what they did, the Raleigh Flex has vertical film transport. The Voigtlander, in order to avoid patent infringement uh, violations, made theirs a horizontal film transport. Plus they did some other, some other changes. Foth did something else. And I'm gonna tell you about that here in a second when I get to it. But this other thing that Falk did, unfortunately, makes this camera susceptible to some other kind of problems. Holy cow, this is beautiful. Oh, man. All right, looks like the seller packed it very well. This comes with some a lens hood, some filters. Oh, crap, I just broke the box. All right. Oh, and a Proxar lens set, meaning I can, I think that means I can take close up portraits. Here is the actual camera in a leather case that is completely fallen apart, but it can be restitched. And here it is the Fault Flex camera. All right. So, no, that was upside down the way I was holding it. She has the lens caps on upside down. All right. So there we go. Up here it says Germany. Down here it says Foth Flex. The lenses are dusty but don't look too bad. And if we open this up, and I have an image. This is the focus knob right here. I've been watching videos about these. It's dark, which is pretty much to be expected for cameras this old. But I don't know if y'all can see that. I do have an image in there through the lens. Okay, man, even has the neck strap, holy cow. All right, so here's what is interesting about these cameras and also what creates a concern. This is one of the very few cameras that has a focal plane shutter. Just about every twin lens camera has the, the Shutter is in the taking lens. This one has the shutter curtain. So, I'm opening it up. 
the shutter curtains there. So this is the advance knob up here, film advance knob. Down here, I believe this is the, this is where you set the shutter speed and you wind the shutter. I see some deterioration on it already. And here's the shutter release. And it's not moving. Okay. All right. I don't think I got it cocked all the way. All right. So anyway, I got a project now. I got this beautiful fault flex, which even with the deterioration, I got some crumbling here on the shutter curtain. It's not terrible. I am not seeing any light leaks. So maybe I can actually get this thing to work. So I'm going to do some work on this, hopefully get it functional again and take some pictures um, and show you what it looks like. So anyway, once again, here's my beautiful mid-1930s. This is one of the early Flex twin lens reflex cameras. Um, it is in not bad condition. Oh, one thing I wanted to show. These cameras have an accessory shoe that even like I've seen some professionals talking on video saying, I have no idea what this thing is for. It's not a regular shoe. It's like something goes under it and it doesn't make any sense. One guy said, I think that's just for attaching the case. Well, it's not. It's actually for attaching this sports finder. So you have that on there. You preset your focus, your aperture, and you just use this as a quick reference and take pictures. So that's awesome. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get this thing working again, hopefully. I'll take some pictures with it, and I'll make another video. So uh, hopefully before too long, I'll be seeing you all again. Hey, guys, I thought I'd show you the progress, uh, what's going on with my Flex. Um, So before I get there, I wanted to show you something kind of cool that I discovered. So this box that the Flex came in, it was obviously uh, custom built for the camera with that leather case that came with it that's out being repaired right now. It fit in here perfectly with the accessories. And uh, so I pulled this liner out to try to figure out like, is this actually a camera box or what, what is this? And it turns out that the box was custom built out of an old cigar, uh, tobacco crate, not a cigar crate, a tobacco crate. Um, and then the guy covered it with like this oil impregnated light canvas or something like that. Um, so they put a lot of care into this. But something really cool is that the cardboard liner that they put in it is actually from a Kodak camera from like 1905. Uh, so I thought that was pretty neat. Anyway, so what was going on with this camera, once I got the, uh, the shutter cycling, what I found out was that the two halves of the shutter, and for those of you not familiar with these shutters, there's an upper curtain and then a lower curtain. When you take a picture, the upper curtain moves up, the lower curtain follows it. it. usually creates just a little slit that rolls across the film plane. That's how you make your exposure. Well, on this one, the gap where the two, the upper and lower shutter curtain should have been overlapping, they weren't. There was a gap down here at the bottom, uh, just like this. So I had to figure out what the problem was and it turned out that uh, once me and a friend opened up the back and we found out that the upper curtain material where it's anchored down here on this lower roller, the adhesive had failed and the material was sliding upward, creating uh, slack, which created that gap. So I re-glued it also um, lightly lubricated here inside the, the shutter mechanism. And now it's working all right. Um, so as far as, as far as I can tell, it is going to function just fine. Now, the next problem is that because this shutter curtain, the material that covers it and keeps it light tight is deteriorating and all this stuff's flaking off. I've been, it developed all these little bitty, like microscopic, uh, light leaks. So I've been going over it with a paint pen, which I'm told is not going to work, that the paint's not going to be flexible and it's going to flake off, but maybe it'll work temporarily. Uh, so I've been going over it with a paint pen, trying to get it to, to uh, be light tight again. And I think it's, 
I think it's pretty much working, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you um, the loading process with an old, um, just, this is just paper. So I'm going to show you how to, how to load it, um, to open it up. Yeah, just, you know, it, it's kind of a unique thing to open up, but you just turn this dial, pop this thing. It's got um, a two part door. You stick this thing in, in here. You can pull those knobs out, lock them out. Stick your roll of tape in there, roll of tape, roll of film in there. Push those knobs back in. Then it's just the usual thing of feeding this into the top spool, holding it tight, tightening it. until that arrow comes out somewhere around there. Now close it up and you've got two red windows. This unscrews to show a red window here and then this one. Uh, I don't know why anybody would use this one. I think maybe this is for older film types, but you just open up this right here. Now you've got your red window and you advance until you get that number one in that red window. Get some indicators here that you're coming up to it. There's the arrow, the dots, and there's the number one. Now I'll close this back up. Then the next thing you do over here, you've got a counter. Um, this is a counter, but it will not stop automatically when you get to each frame. It's just, it's just a, a, another red window so that you don't have to keep opening this one. But once you load that film in there, you just push this thing back, it resets back to one. Now you, so you cock your shutter, you know, set your, set your speed, cock your shutter, take your first shot. Well, I had my finger on there and that kind of messed that up. But anyway, now you have to advance to the next frame and it's not going to stop for you so you have to watch and there's a the number two in the red window that little red window there recock the shutter take your next shot then you have to do the same thing and you keep going all the way through to 12 and you know usual thing you don't know what to do okay so um as far as I can tell, this thing is completely operational. I'm going to put some film in it. I've got this really cool English library kind of room that my wife recently set up. I've got my favorite model. So I'm going to take some pictures and uh, I'll show you how this camera does. Hopefully the light leaks in the curtain aren't too bad. And if they're, I mean, if I get some little minor points of light or something, eh, big deal. Camera's still working for the most part. So I will show you all that uh, next part of the video. Hey guys, uh, so I'm going to show you some of the pictures I took. I did manage to use this. I only put one roll through it, but it was a success. Um, the pictures turned out pretty cool. So um, here's one of them. So what something I've learned about this camera is that it, it's a 2.5 lens. So it's one of the fastest lenses in a TLR. Um, but because it was uncoated, the light transmission is more like a 3.5, 3.8. Um, but still, it's got that nice, you know, wide aperture for good bokeh. Um, but it takes some pretty cool pictures. Here's another couple. Um, I did try uh, using the Proxar close-up portrait attachment. In the dim light where I shot, because I'm an idiot, I always want to shoot in dark rooms. I, I love that dark, shadowy look. Um, with the dark ground glass, it was very hard to focus, so I don't, I didn't quite get focused, but still, I was pretty happy with the picture. Um, I also found out that these do not have double exposure protection. Ask me how I know. Um, but overall, I'm gonna say this is a really cool camera, and I uh, have some plans for it. I've been invited to go and shoot a reenactment in October as a German to. Uh, there's a German reenactment group that said they will completely outfit me as a German combat photographer and they want me to photograph their side because nobody ever photographs Germans. Um, and so I might do that. I will use this as my primary. I use my uh, contacts too as a 35 millimeter as a backup and hopefully I'll get some cool pictures. So again, the beautiful Flex. If you happen to run across one, 
I suggest you get it. They're obviously not impossible to repair and uh, they take some pretty cool pictures. So that's all I got for right now. You'll take it easy.